But again, welcome. My name is Linda Shank, and um, I'm the director here at the park. So, like to have to see everybody here. How many have never been in our park before? I just like to see. Well, welcome. <laughs> Super. And then welcome to everybody who's been here before. Um, this is our first big program for the year, and so I'm very excited about this because this kicks off a whole season of really fun programming here that we do at the center, and it's on our website. And we're going to start going full board with everything um, starting today. So we actually, last year I looked, we did 60 events here wow. last year. So we have a lot for everybody. So please take a look at the, at the website under the events tab and uh, come back for more things. Um, this is a super fun program for me because last year I got a bluebird house, put it in my yard, and I got bluebirds. Oh, wow. <laughs> so was that just one bluebird? One bluebird house had two individual plush plushes. I got two, so we cleaned out the first one and we got another one. So this works. So listen to what these guys say because it's pretty cool. So also to help you with that, our local kids from the middle school STEM program made these bird houses, and these are bluebird houses, and uh, they're ten dollars. And all the money goes back to the kids. It helps to support the STEM program at the school. So here's the Bluebird House. And we have Jorg Kessler with us today and his wife, Kathy. Jorg is right here. They have honey. And this is. So if you'd like to have some honey, we have that for sale out here as well. So, But I'm going to turn it over and I'll let them introduce um, themselves. And thank you again for coming today, OK? So. so I'm as close to Lowell Peterson as you can get, because I've known Lowell Peterson for probably 60 of my 70 some years you know anyway he's he's got all the all the slides and all the visuals you just have me <laughs> <laughs> however i'm jim higgins and uh, the friend of mine is jim bikes yeah. and Polly okay and um so we're going to talk about bluebirds i'll try to do my best i won't be everything with lowell's presentation because played off a lot of the slides but um so how many people have bluebird houses right now well, geez, a lot of people. That's good. Um, you know, they, they talk about bluebird trails, and a bluebird trail consists of anything from two to two hundred, whatever, three hundred. You know, um, a, one house is enough. I mean, you can put up a house, and you know, if you if you build it, they will come. Um, habitat is big. They like a lot of. They're they're a prairie bird, but they do nest in hollow branches of trees. And there's a couple examples over here, like woodpecker holes in telephone poles and, and a tree there. They will go into a nest, a, a, a woodpecker hole, if there's nothing available for them. I've seen them go into, you know, like you have the, the steel pipe clothesline poles and you end like a two-inch pipe. I've seen them going in and out of them and build a nest in there. Not a lot of room to raise five babies, but they do it. So people say, what's what's the best bluebird house? It's the one that they use. I mean, that's just it. You could you could nail a boot up onto the pole, and they would go in there. So a lot of us have you know bluebird trails. I have four that consists of probably oh my god, 50, 51, 52 houses, something like that. And I stretch out. I and you have to you know the best thing is maybe. They say 300 feet apart, 100 yards apart, and so it takes a quite a quite a long, you know, big area and a long time to walk around there. Um, they like open air, open prairie, like I said, and they're bug eaters. Um, right now, last week, a friend of mine emailed us and said bluebirds are here, and I thought, okay, but did they ever leave? Because I've seen them in January when it was like wow. 10 below zero. Mm -hmm. And as long as they have water source, as long as they have a food source, okay, so they're a bug eater, but what do they eat? Well, they'll eat leftover buckthorn berries, they'll eat leftover fruit, you know, wild, wild uh, grapes and stuff, anything that's left on the, on the branches and left on the vines. As long as they find some kind of food, they'll be around. Just like a robin. People say, oh, I've seen my first robin. Well, they they be around all winter because as long as they have fruit and they have water, they'll be around here because it's not necessarily a warm weather bird, but they do come back and uh, typically around here, um, I look for them around St. Patrick's Day, middle of March, and then, um, so I usually, my, all my boxes right now on my trail are open, and when I say open, that means that I drop the doors, I drop the fronts, and I clean them all out in the fall, 
And to me, that it just helps keep from mice crawling up in there and making nests. Because if anybody's cleaned out mouse nests out of anything, <laughs> you know, mouse pee stinks. So I don't, I don't like to do that. So I open them up. And yes, there's other, <clears throat> there's another part that people say, well, I leave them closed because in the winter time, chickadees go in there out of the winter, nut hatches will go in out of the winter, woodpeckers. I've had woodpeckers bang the hole bigger to get in there. Then that's another repair job in the spring. So I open mine up. Um, and then by the first, like I said, the end of the, usually that last week in March, I'll go around and I'll close all my houses up and make sure that if there's anything to be repaired or uh, changes or whatever, I can do that then. Because typically the bluebirds won't start nesting, some, and they'll prove me wrong, but they typically nest middle of April when they first start building nests. They'll have, they'll have the, the males will come and they'll search for a house. Do I like this house with this view or do I want the house over there with that view or whatever? And then they'll wait for a mate to come along and says, oh, look, darling, look, I got this nice house for you. Got this view of the prairie. And so then they'll make their nests and then, uh, and then the show goes on. So I, I, I monitor the nests, I monitor my boxes once a week. And we do that just to kind of keep track of where they are and their nesting. But it's also exciting to see the first little bluebird show up. And so the reason, because the bluebirds will they'll lay their eggs. Typically, it's a four clutch, maybe five. And if you're really special, they'll lay six. You know, I've only had a couple that have had six eggs in their clutch. But typically, it's four, maybe to five. And then to watch them each week as they hatch, <coughs> and then they grow, and then they fledge. It's usually from the time the nest is built to the eggs like 14 days, 12, 14 days, and then another, when the eggs are hatched, another 14 days before they fledge. And what's important to, to monitor is once they're fledged, then I go and I open up the box and I clean out the old nest, get it all cleaned out and everything ready for the new tenants. Because who wants to go to a rental house and have somebody else's stuff left behind, right? So, and, and there are people say, well, I put my bluebird house up and I'm all set. I said, well, do you clean it out? Do I have to? Well, yeah, that's, it's just because. It's sanitary-wise, you know, clean out because bluebirds are, they're, they're really, they're pretty clean, but they, and they, they carry out the little baby's poop sacks and everything, but some of them don't, and especially when the bluebirds get bigger, the old, you know, the chicks. But other birds will use them too, also uh, tree swallows. And tree swallows, they make a mess in there, but, yeah. so you gotta clean that out. Um, wrens. Or our, our cavity nesters too, they'll use them. I like wrens, I just don't like them in my bluebird house because wrens will compete. They will, I've had them, they'll go in there and they'll pick holes in the eggs, throw the eggs out and build their nest on it. Um, kind of gruesome, but I've had wrens come in and kill mom right on her nest and then build a nest right over her. So that's kind of gruesome, but you know what, that's nature. Um, we can't, we can only do what we can do. <laughs> And so a couple, couple years, a few years back, I went to the Bluebird Convention, and we, you're in a whole room for like 100 and some people, and we're all like Bluebird parents, right? We all want our kids to grow up safe and, and move out of the house and get a job and get their own lives and everything. And you want every egg to hatch, you want every, every chick to fledge, but you can't control everything, you know? And, and weather plays a big part, especially in the spring when they come in and they start nesting. Um, their nest out there like say at the end of April beginning of May and sometimes in May we've had two three inches of snow and it can be cold and they're trying to keep the eggs warm um, and even when the birds when they hatch now you got all the little chicks try to keep them warm to get them so that they can grow and, and, and fledge so it's always a I guess it's a it's a uh, what do I call it a job of love because you want to do what you can and we all love nature, we all love being outside. And I, I take one day a week, and it usually takes me maybe four hours, five hours to go around and check my bluebird trails, because I've got them scattered all over. And, uh, but it's fun to be out there, and then you never know what you're gonna find in a bluebird house when you open it up. And it could be a bat, <laughs> or it could be tree frogs, I've had those in there, mice, you know, sometimes they'll get in, but I, I, like I said, I try to keep those curved because we put predator guards on the bottom of the, on the bluebird house. If you, if, um, this, I'll, like what I do, and I typically mount these, like Lowell was here because he had all of his props. Um, 
you'll mount this on a steel post, either a pipe or a post. Is that too bright? Yeah. 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 Okay. And then, so you mount this thing on a steel pipe or a post, and you want it to be about five feet off the ground. That's usually typical, but you want to be able to see in there without carrying a step ladder around. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then, so predator guards can be a number of things. It can be a, a, a piece of a PVC pipe over that pipe, or what I use is a piece of three and a half inch stove pipe, aluminum stove pipe, right. that I put around here and I snap it and I put a screw on that that holds it. That keeps your cats typically off of that. It keeps your raccoons because to me, you know, if you don't put that on there, you're basically putting up a raccoon feeder. They, they can crawl up there and they eat them eggs like chicklets. You know, they just, and I've had, I've had them rob my nest that way. So a predator guard is a good thing to have. And also the height because a cat can jump quite a ways. And yes, I like cats. I'm not saying that only cats. Have their place, and they don't. They don't have a place robbing my bluebird. So, um, yeah. When you say you go and you monitor, you don't. You actually open it and yep. look and see. Okay. Yep. You open it up, and that's <laughs> that's always the hard part. Let's see. Does this have? Point. So you can open it, and then that gets you because the nest usually fills up. So you have to be able to look in the cup, you know, and that just gives you a, a better chance to uh, see what's going on. The only problem with that is when this is closed and they're getting close to fledge, like you know, you, like last week they're getting big, now this week, you open it up slowly because I've had you know, and now you got all these little chicks running around on the ground and you can't catch them, you know, to put them back in here. So they're on their own at that point. But I like to let them go back on their own when they're ready. And so that just gives me an idea that, you know, either they're ready to go and I'll know by the next next week it's time to clean out the house and then get ready for the next clutch. I've cleaned out the houses and within hours another one is in there already. Oh, yep. And, um, and I don't know if it's the same one, you know, because they don't wear little jerseys with numbers. <laughs> you know, and, that's, and then people say, well, do they come back to the same area? I, I believe they do. And uh, because well, I, I haven't banded any, but I do know people who have banded bluebirds. And I think that once you set up a, a, a trail and it's established, the offspring of that trail will come back in that area where they were where they were fledged. Um, I've had one. one um, was that the last uh, trail I put up? One of the, it's one of my newest sort of trails. Anyways, it's only been up for like five years on it, and the numbers of bluebirds have increased every year since. So I'm thinking that. Yeah, they do come back and the chicks will, you know, they'll come back to that area. <laughs> and it's like, well, do they fight over the same house? I don't know. Because, like I said, you, you, know, you, you don't know. But I says I have each of my trails, I think there's, I got like 40 acres. On 40 acres, I can put up 10, 12, 14 houses on that 40 acres. And especially you want to be like, I said, 100 yards apart. Because they are territorial. And if you put them closer than that, Yep, you'll get a bluebird in one, and and you'll get a, maybe a tree swallow in another one, which isn't bad because they're all good. They're bug eaters, um, and I like tree swallows. They have their place in the world too. So, but but the bluebirds won't nest that close to each other. They're, like I said, they're territorial, and even in the springtime, there'll be a little bit of territorial dominance trying to figure out like who's going to get what house. I don't get into that discretion. <laughs> I just I just put the houses out there and let them come whatever they do. But, um, and then I usually, usually by the end of August, late August, around here, is when our nesting season pretty much closes up. Um, and, then, and it's always like, like the first one shows up, and then the next one, it's never on like, open up the door and they all nest, and then they it's all done and they close the door. Because out of my, you know, I have 15 houses at one, and, you, and it's, it's inevitable that the last house with a clutch is the one at the farthest end of the field. It's not the one next to the road, it's not the one by you know, the parking area. So it, you get your exercise one way or the other. But as they open, I should say, as they fledge out, I usually keep them closed up right to the very end. But what I've noticed is that they're only gonna nest for so long and then you just keep checking them and checking them and there's nothing. So I started, this last year I started 
at, like in August, when when the last one fledges, I'll close it, and then I'll come back the next week, and if there's no signs of a nest, I'll just open up the house because they're not they're all done nesting because of the time frame of them to start heading back south. Now, friends that have down in Madison area, that's a whole different climate change down there. They'll nest sooner, and they'll nest longer. And they might get three nestings out of their out of their houses. Where up here, we usually get two sets, two sets of, of uh, nests. So it, it depends on your weather, and it depends on the food source, and it depends on uh, locations. But um, so like I, I was talking earlier, and I wish I would have, I almost brought my houses along, but I thought, Lowell has so much stuff I didn't bring it. Mm -hmm. But I, I have, um, like I said, everybody says, well, what, what house is the best? What kind of house is the best? And I said, well, this is, a, this is a knockoff of the MAB style, the North American Bluebird Association. It's square with the front opening up. The Peterson house, which I've changed all of mine over to Peterson's, and it's not Lowell Peterson, it was, I can't remember the guy's name, back in the 70s, he made like 1,500 of these things and put them around. So they're, they're at a slant, the front is at a slant, and that's his, this is his design because they figured even with a predator guard, if a raccoon got up there, they'd have to put a slow paw in there and then yeah. reach oh, yeah. down, which then just yeah. kind of hard to get to. Mm -hmm. they, will, they have done it. <laughs> but, and then, like I said, this is tip down, so when you have to check them, when you raise way? this. Turn it this way. Is there a shelf in there? No, this way. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that a shelf? The floor. A floor? The floor. Okay. Yeah, this oh. here is a, this is like a, a dryer sheet, which keeps gnats and bugs off them. But yeah, the floor here is where they build their nest. And it, uh -huh. Their nest will usually fill it up yeah. about half full. Okay. Hmm. Um, another one, I wish I would have brought it. Because um, you have, this is the Peterson style, and you have the Nab style um, of Gilbertson, which, now yeah, those are all the same. A Gilbertson is like a coffee can on a stick. Um, so they usually make it out of PVC, and it's a cylinder with a, you know, it's got the hole on it, and then it's got a, a, a top. And then the top is situated so that it has like a, a little bit of a framework with nails that you can squeeze the PVC, put it up and pop. It's got a hole in there so you can pop it out and it, and it hooks onto the screws. I had those on one of my trails for maybe four years, five years. And I changed them out because the PVC starts to deteriorate after a while and then they crack and then they break. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't happen on the wood. So I, I just thought, well, and, it, and I've, lost, I've lost chicks in those. Gilbertsons because they get hot in the summertime. Oh. They're, they're thin, they get hot, where the wood has more of an insulating factor. It gets warm in there, but it doesn't get hot, and I've had them <coughs> bake in those Gilbertsons, especially when it was hot and humid. I lost a lot of babies that way at one summer. Two years ago, I think it was really hot and humid to stretch there. I lost a lot of babies that way. So I wasn't too excited about the Gilbertson, but I suppose in some climates they work okay. Um, Let's see. Um, I have a question. Yep. Um, these that they have here, they don't seem to open. It should. <laughs> no, it should. No, because they're, they're, oh, they're, no. they're all sealed up. They're all sealed up. They're all sealed up. They should, yeah. They should. <laughs> Somebody they're, needs to talk to the kids. Yeah. <laughs> there, should be, yeah there should be a way to open it. No, um, you won't be able to take yeah. them apart. Same one. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, okay, so that's, that's another thing too. Um, okay, they got the square drive. Well, okay, there's one missing here. So what happened? The screw in the bottom hold it in. Yeah, yeah I'd have to. Yeah, because they should, they should be able to open up to clean them out. Um, one, one thing I find on my trails, because I have them in, uh, you know where the Drewski Drewski Park is up there? And then uh, <coughs> Kelly Creek Natural Preserve. So those are public places, obviously. The other ones are on farms or whatever. It's kind of more of a private. But people are interested. They want to know oh, what's in that bluebird house. What's in that bluebird house? You know. So then, so then now, oh, they can take the nail out and they can open it up and stick. And then, you know, if the little ones leave, or they'll say, oh, that nest is empty. You know, 
take it out like they're helping me. Mm -hmm. And then I come and say, well, what happened to that desk? Mm -hmm. Did the birds fledge or did something get them? Or what? You know, I don't know. So instead of putting a nail in them, which is easy, you just pull a nail on them. I use screws that, it's like that has a square screw, square drive. Something that people don't just carry in their pocket, right? You know, like a star drive or a square drive. And then, yep, every every house I got to unscrew it, lift it down, but I put it in there. It just keeps people from tampering. They they're interested. They want to look at it, but and I I put up little signs in the place where it says, "Observe with your eyes only." And if you're interested, you know, I'm here on this day every week. If you want to come out and walk along and look, you know, I'm fine with that. Um, I did have I, I did give a presentation to a bunch of middle school kids at Kelly Creek Preserve one day, and uh, they said, "Oh, can we look at the, you know, the birdhouses?" And I said, well, I had some that were close to fledging, and I just didn't want to chance it because when you got 25 little kids, you know. Oh. <laughs> so I, I I seen this in the Bluebird um, Monthly. It's called uh, BRA, Bluebird Restoration Association of Wisconsin. They have a, a, it's a club I belong to or an organization. And then the guy in there had a, a, a pretty neat idea. He had a piece of plexiglass on the back of his house that was covered up. So I thought, oh, yeah. so I went on the shop and I built one. And then I have a magnet so I can just lift up the back and you can see in there. So I call it the peekaboo house. So when kids want to look in there, you can raise that up and they can see in there. I don't, I don't think I don't have any pictures of that one on my phone. But um, but it, it's you know of course then again I always carry a water bottle with me and some napkins and everything just in case you know you got to clean the glass and because uh, they do mess especially for the, the tree swallows get in there they mess up their glass with them. I know I, you think they they use that for their toilet paper or something I don't know but they just get smaller <laughs> in size so in order to be able to see in there you got to clean that glass out but um, so yeah so then like I said then the end of the summer. I open them all up, clean them all out, and uh, if some of them need repairs or painting or something, and I don't paint them. Um, I usually put a Thompson's water seal on them to kind of protect them from the rain, but um, that's about it. Um, Jim, is there anything that you could add? Or, um, Doing a good job. <laughs> I have a question. So yep. are you absolutely sure it's the wrens that kill the, because I was told sparrows, because they've got a notched beak. Sparrows, all yeah. sparrows. House if, you're, yes. if you're in a, if you're in a, I'll say a, <coughs> anything with cattle, dairy farm, beef farm, whatever it is, because I have, <coughs> I have 14 houses out at my friend's farm, and the one closest to the barn, I was always getting house sparrows in there. Yeah. But actually, two of them, you know, by the barn. Well, now he doesn't have cattle anymore. Um, he does rent it out, so it has less cattle than when he did, and I haven't had as much problem with. Ooh with house sparrows getting in there anymore. But yes, they will They will do the same thing. The house sparrow and? And the, the wren. They the will wren. both. Because yep. it seems the wren is so tiny. Yep. I think that little, they're feisty little guy. Oh, they, they are. And, and I always say, I said, what we got to do, I said, yeah, we can't we can't chase the wrens away because it's, it's all there. But I said, what we got to do, bluebirds are lovers, they're not fighters. Mm -hmm. we got to give them, we got to get them to have an attitude, you know, to, <laughs> to, to, to protect their house, right? Yeah. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know how else to do it, because, and and some of them will. Some of them are territorial. I mean, I've had I've had bluebirds come after me when I do the you know check them, but most of the time they'll fly off in the tree and watch at a distance while I check, and then you know then they'll go back to business. But but yeah, that's the bluebird. I mean, tree swallows are okay. They don't bother the bluebirds, and the bluebirds don't bother them. They're pretty pretty equal. But wrens are wrens are feisty. They're just and then uh, the sparrows, yep. Last fall, it was probably September-ish maybe, October-ish maybe, somewhere around there, um, I had like, I looked out the window and there was like 12 to 15 bluebirds all in this one tree. Were they all congregating to migrate? Probably, yeah, they get yeah. together and they'll all, you know, we'll Well, they were having you. a fun time too. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. They were just flitting everywhere. It was like just I said, so we, were doing, we were doing a Christmas bird count that was, um, it was a few years ago. It was the first week of January. You know, it was like I said, it was like ten below zero, and it was just everything was cold. And this little rivulet down on the Trimble River, um, there was like seven or eight of them. And I thought, okay, is there enough food for seven or eight? I mean, maybe one or two, but you know, but and I don't know how long they stick around. I mean, yeah. you know, if you get a nice warm day, like, oh, let's get out of here. Let's, you know, yeah. get up. But I don't know. 
mean, as long as there's food and water, the birds will stay. Yeah. It's not like they're all warm weather. Um, a couple of questions. One is um, you don't put little uh, perches in front. Nope, not. You, that, should that, you do that on any bird house? Unless you want wrens or unless you want uh, <laughs> sparrows. Because the other ones, they don't need. Um, oh, okay. You'll notice on the bluebird houses, there's notches, there's grooves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's for the mom or dad to come and, you know, some place to latch onto. Mm -hmm. And then some people, I, they put them on the inside, so when the babies, you know, when they're not ready to fledge, they have something to grab on to jump out. And so, but perches, that's decoration only. Those are like for, those are like Walmart houses. Type kind of thing. You know, people put bird houses up because they think, but you know, the only thing you're going to get in those things are either wrens or squirrels. And that's fine. I mean, they all need a place, but they all have their, they all have their place in the world. And like I said, I just, wrens don't have a place in my bird houses. I try to keep them all. Uh, another question. Um, do you, what kind of plants would help the bluebirds? Um, bluebirds? Okay. Getting food in the, the wintertime or, or you Well, know, like I said, anything, anything with a, a, a berry. Um, we have high bush cranberries. Like, high bush cranberries. Wow. They would love yeah. them. Yeah. Yes. And the wild grapes. And, and we still have them. I mean, yeah. over the winter, they kind of shrivel, but the birds still eat them. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah, but I've cleaned when I played like early spring to first you know first nesting, I've gone in to clean the nest out, and when there's no bugs to feed the babies, mm -hmm. they got to feed them something, mm -hmm. and there'll be all kinds of, of uh, berry seeds mm. in the nest left behind. Mm. So yeah, they'll. Um, I don't know if there's many other than high bush cranberries or wild grapes, stuff like that. What about raspberries? They might, you know, um, anything that's you know. Uh, available. I mean, it's you know. Same kind of berry. One, one other thing. I've heard about. They, they came back early one year, and everybody said, "Look, they're going to starve." And then actually, I think we found one. I don't know if it was a cat or if it starved. Um, but they said mealworms. So we should put out mealworms. Does that actually? Well, work? mealworms work. They will eat them up. They'll eat them up like chiclets. They love mealworms. Like I said, like that friend of mine, Ed, sent out a note. Oh, the bluebirds are here. So we better buy a 50-pound sack of, of mealworms because what are they going to eat? Mm -hmm. And so, like, Lowell tells the story that he had, you know, some bluebirds, so he thought, well, I'll put mealworms for them, you know, it was early, early year. And he went back, he says, they're all gone. So within, you know, he thought, boy, they were hungry, so he put more out there. You know, after a couple of days, you know, so he said, geez, so he, he puts them out there, and he sat back, and he waited. Ants. Oh. And we're taking all those mealworms away. So you're, okay, so that, I'm not feeding them on the ground anymore. You know, put them up. But, um, and then you'll have, like, I haven't had any problem with bears on my bluebird houses, but Lowell has. He's had, he actually had a mama bear right in his backyard that took the bluebird house down. He has pictures of it. But, um, but that's things you, you know, you watch out, predators and I get I get bears in my yard in the springtime, usually like in the end of May into June, and I take have to take all my feeders down just so there's nothing there. Otherwise, they keep coming back for free samples. Mm -hmm. and, I didn't realize how much uh, bluebirds love the water. Yeah. At one time, we had our our bird bath out there, and it. I'm not kidding you. There were bluebirds all the way around Rain it, down. and they were taking turns, yeah. taking baths. Yeah, like I said, they, you know, with anything, they need water, they yeah. need food, and they need shelter. So that's <laughs> we try to provide that. Now, yes, I don't put you know bird baths out on my on my trails, but typically, well, at Drewiski Park, there's the, the river. At Kelly Creek, there's Kelly Creek Springs, and uh, at the farm, there's a creek. Um, so yeah, there's you know. There's water, yeah, and, and I've seen pictures too where people have their bluebird, you know, or I mean, bluebirds are on their bird feeder, or bird, um, bird bath on a bird feeder. We have a good friends that have good success with bird feeders on the east side of the state, and their style of a bird bird house has the slit right under the roof. Yep, is what they use, and that it doesn't have the hole. That's the case. That's the case style K box. K, K I think box? it's called the K box. Do you have one? No, I don't. I don't think. I, I thought we did. Anyway, I think Lola. Yep, and then, there's a reason for that because, um, if I can remember correctly, um, the sparrows don't like that because it lets more light in. 
and they because a, a house sparrow will build a nest. You, you can always tell if a house sparrow is in there because they, they build their nest in the bottom and they fill the top with with straw. So it's like they're in a in a straw I house. I don't. Yeah, it's it's like you know covered over. So when I see that, I just throw that all out, eggs and all. I don't care. I throw them out because they're unprotected. They're 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 on uh, they're a pest bird or whatever. Um, and then there there's also been studies. I don't know. There's there was there was a guy in, in the bra organization. So he says, okay, so sparrows they like it dark in there. Bluebirds don't care as long as they're out of the weather. So he started a study where on the top here he would have a three inch circle with plexiglass to let light in there and that deterred them to a certain extent but it's not foolproof. I mean obviously if they really want to nest they're going to nest and then they'll just fill it up with straw to cover up that, that light. We did that on ours just to de deter the swallows because the swallows were just taking everything over. Yeah, that, you know, they and, and do. It was I mean, okay. They do. I mean, I like tree swallows. They, yeah. you know, they eat a lot of bugs. <laughs> and then if you sit on the porch and you got mosquitoes and bugs, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. wrens are great because they eat a lot of bugs and yeah. so that. But so, is there a certain direction we've read that you should place the houses, like facing east at right. certain? Well, typically, I, I put mine all facing east southeast, and that's just when the sun comes up, it warms it, and then the back side of the house is facing the northwest winds, which typically is prevalent. Especially in the springtime, the northwest winds come, and then you don't have the cold wind going in the hole when the, mm -hmm. they're sitting on their nest. Mm -hmm. So I do just the opposite, and I'll tell you why. Because in the summer, east southeast, that's where the rains come from, and I've had chicks die because they get wet. They get wet and cold. Hmm. So, maybe so had, I don't know. Maybe that, need a longer roof over them over the. You know, we, we I don't have, have good have, success with ours facing the north. Too. Yeah. If I've had some driving storms, yeah, they will. You know, they've gotten wet, but not detrimental. I mean, we live up on a cliff or a bluff, so. Yeah. But I, I don't know that. And that's it, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I have a question about dryer sheets. Will those yeah. keep away the black flies too? We yeah. lost a whole colony of purple martins because yeah. the chicks, the black flies came in and. Wow. You know, people tried everything. Like I said, you know, when you go to a convention, you get to talk to all these other yeah. people. I tried this, I tried this. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, permethrin, you know, it's like a wood yeah, tick yeah, permethrin. Yeah, yeah. Um, some guys will take and they'll spray that around the, on the base, on, on the base of the nest, you know, on the outside, not in the nest, but on the outside, oh. or on the face, because yeah. where the you know where the flies yeah. will come in, that yeah, kind of uh -huh. deters them. Um, I have a combination of uh, cutters and. And forgive me, I've been retired too long from 3M, but we made um, a bug spray. Oh. I can't think of it right now. But I mix that 50-50 and I carry that. And I've had opening up and then the little guys were just getting chewed up with, yeah. with you know. Well, they'll suck the blood and, right out of them. Right, they do, and that's what that, that kills them. They'll suck yeah. the blood right out yeah. of them. And they, mm -hmm. But I've, I've given them just a quick, you know, okay guys, here you go, about shower time. You know, I just give them a quick spray mm -hmm. and I come back the next and there's nothing in there and they're all back to, you know, happy, you healthy. Spray it right on them. Yeah, I just... Oh, on the chicks? I'll open it, you open the box. I just box. open the door and I just, just give right. a quick, it's a pump spray, so it's just yeah. a quick, and and, then, and they do it around the base of the nest because yeah. that's where the flies and stuff kind of come up. But that just deterred them and I was oh. like, wow, that worked, you know. I, I wish did. you could remember what it was. <laughs> But you use cutters too. I, I had cutters. That was the first. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I can see the. Do I they still I, make I've been it? retired too long. Yeah. Actually, the reason I got yeah. it they... is I worked in, in a pilot plant processing area, and we had a contract for airport in France to make this stuff. So we made 50 gallon, 50 gallon back batch of this, and then filled up what they wanted, and then there was I don't know how many gallons left over. So I took a couple of gallons and it's uh, and it works. I mean, it's I don't like I'm, I'm not a guy to put bug spray on in the winter. Are you in camping or whatever? It's got to be pretty bad before I squirt it and bug spray on me. But I do keep that because when I'm when I summertime go out there, I'll spray my pant legs with that. Mm -hmm. It just kind of keeps mm -hmm. bugs and stuff. And then if there's any fly problem, I just do that around the base of the nest in the box, and it's it's worked. Mm -hmm. So. Do you ever have problems with mites? Mites? No. Well, we were, not yet. Well, that's good. Um, oh, when we had the purple martins, we were having mites, and they said put seven 
that dust seven. Yep. And then when the parents walk in, they get that and on their Oh. And no kidding, it works. They have no mites anymore, but I just wondered if they go for bluebirds. I, I don't know. Okay. I, um, I haven't had a problem with mites. I don't know if Mary has. She's had a problem with black flies. Yeah, the black flies. But, um, I don't know. And, and we've never gotten them back again. Yeah. The purple martins. <laughs> because evidently they remember that's the bad spot. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard, you know. We had a whole colony. It was awful. Yeah. So, um, yep. um, so tree swallows aren't bad, but they literally are taking over my neighbor houses. Is there just there is just nothing? I just have to let them go. Pretty much, because they're Cause a protected they, bird. Because <laughs> then they attack us, and they attack the dog. Yep. And, okay. Yep, what they, if what if she just kept taking out the nest? Well, We've tried that. Oh. And just, they they get very aggressive. Very they're, aggressive. They're very aggressive. Yeah. I, when I, I check I my actually had fun with the hose, you know, because they come oh, like <laughs> when I check when I check my houses and they die bomb me and they're click 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 click. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Like, yes. I say, okay, who's your daddy? You wouldn't have a house if it wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> so just gotta live with them. Right, I mean, gotta I'll live with them. Get, I'll usually get one one family bluebirds a, a season and and then. The swallows are just... It's, it's amazing, too, because I'll find a, uh, my bluebird trail out at the farm, I'll say, the front hay field, I have two, four, six houses out there, which I thought is perfect bluebird, but I'll get, they just fill up with tree swallows. <coughs> and then in the back towards the woods, which is typically wren territory, I might get one, one box I sacrifice to the wrens, mm -hmm. and the rest of them are bluebirds. Mm -hmm. So it's it's hit or miss. What you know, you say, well, you know, at location, location, location. But yeah. if they don't like it, they're not going to nest there. So, like I said, the scouts will come in. And, well, do you like this view, or do you like that view, or you know? I'll be then, grateful for my one family. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> you do what you can. You guys must have taken my tree swallows because we used to have tons of them, oh, yeah. and the tree swallows were in one, and the bluebirds were in the other box. You know, about yep. 15 feet. We have no tree swallows anymore. So is there any truth to putting two houses relatively close mm -hmm. together? Fifteen feet well, of the swallows and yeah. mm -hmm. bluebirds? Because that's what we're trying right now. Right, right. that's yeah, what they, that's, that's what, some, some people say that, so I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. So okay. I think it was last year, the year before, I think it was my, last year was my second year with that. I put houses like mm -hmm. on a fence post here and on a fence post mm -hmm. here, so they're close. Yeah. I figure, okay, rent, or not rent, but bluebirds will take one, tree swallows yeah. take the other one. Nope, I filled them all up with tree swallows. They're just they're just happy colonists. They just like to live with everybody. And I'm thinking we're in, we're in bluebird territory, but we don't get any bluebirds. And out of those two, four, six, eight houses out there in that front hay field, I might get one with a bluebird. Wow. Which seems strange to me, but that's you know, maybe it's just not the right location. I don't know. So maybe I should try changing. I've got the what do you call it? The Gilbert. Gilbertson. Yeah. The the um, PVC. Yeah. But we used to have tons of bluebirds, and now I'm the same like you. If I can get one patch, I'll be happy. Yeah. Um, but now, where'd they you know, go? Like, a, like I said, you know, everybody experiments with. Now I've got chickadees, which isn't bad. But chickadees, chickadees yeah. are good. Like yeah, them. but sure. I, I want bluebirds. Yeah, right. I mean, you <laughs> so that's why I came. You put a bluebird house up, you want a bluebird, right? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I came here. I'm like, why are, where are bluebirds? Why aren't they coming back like they used to? I, I, last year was kind of a, a I'll say it was a strange year, it started out slow, and some, like out of the farm, I always had a ton of uh, tree swallows, I had very few, but I had more bluebirds. By the time that season ended and went through my count, I had more, I had more, you know, bluebirds than normal. And another trail, like I said, it was like, and maybe this is the sixth year, last year was the sixth year with that one, I just went almost double the amount of bluebirds. Wow. I was surprised that... Do you know why? Maybe they're just established now. And it's it's right in town, you know? Does it have anything to do with where they go south? Like storms and stuff like that? Um, it was, about th was that three years ago yeah. where they had the deep freeze yes. in Texas? Yep. And we had heard that a lot of them died yeah, down We lost there. a lot so, of songbirds all the way around. Yeah, yes. our friends on the east side of the state never had any bluebirds yeah. that that summer then, mm -hmm. so yeah. that does... 
I, I, my production went down like 40% or more that year mm -hmm. yeah. um, just because of that. And yeah. tree swallows and bluebirds and everything, you know, any right. bird that was nesting down there, right. they just devastated mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. people were taking those um, plastic spoons and with scrambled eggs and throwing them up in the air for the, <laughs> yeah. for the um, <laughs> purple martins. Because yeah. they were dying. Yeah, I mean, it was awful. Wow. You looked at this picture and there were all these dead purple martins. Oh, all they had no food. No they were, food. They, yeah, they were too weak to function. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So, yeah. Oh. So, um, you close up your boxes <coughs> mid March, and then they start nesting, bluebirds start nesting around mid April. When do you start doing your weekly checks? Um, and then, and oh, then, oh. and then, when do you stop doing them so that the hatchlings don't come out when you open the door? Well, like I said, I, I put them up in March. I mean, I close them up the end, the, usually the last week of March. Sometime I have a, a day I'll take and I'll go out and I'll close them all up. And I'll usually give them a couple of weeks that closed up before I'll go out there. And if I have, well, I'm just going to go out and check them today, see what's out there. And then if there's a nest, that starts every week because then you're going to know it's going to be. And then, like in August, um, typically the first part of August, most of them are done. There may be a straggler on each one, each nest, you know, each trail. So, and it's, like I said, law of averages is always the one at the farthest end, <laughs> you know. But, so when I, usually by the by mid, mid August, if I don't have anything in that nest, I'll just open it up because they're not going to come back. Oh, like I told you, the one I found at the end of the season, I took that nest out and I put it in my display box so people could see it. That nest showed up in August, and I let it go for three weeks, and there was nothing. It was a perfectly perfectly formed little nest, just beautiful, and nothing was there. I'd see bluebirds in the area, but they weren't laying eggs. And so the fourth week, I said, okay, that's it. I took it out, brought it home, and I put it in my, my display box. But, um, okay, so, so then I just opened up the houses and... <clears throat> so then once, once the <coughs> eggs hatch, you can watch them for a while, you know, open up the box for a while to observe, but then when should you stop doing that so that those chicks don't accidentally fly out or scrape Well, it's all timing. It's all timing so that, like I said, it's usually 14 days. From the time you see a chick <coughs> hatched, you look ahead 14 days, and I'll, I will check every week. Obviously, if there's inclement weather and I don't get out there, it may be a couple of days later than my normal. I usually try between Tuesdays and Thursdays to do that, so I have an idea. Um, and like I said, when you check it, you, you open it up. And I, I've done this where you go up there and all of a sudden peep, 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 and when they're looking out the hole, like they yeah. think, Mom, is, okay, you guys are all, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say that you're all, you're all good in there and you're all just, you know, waiting for Mom to bring some more bugs. I'm not going to open up the box. But if I don't hear anything, I don't see anything, I'll put my finger in the hole so that they don't, you know, jump out. And I'll just open it up enough to, to, so I can get a look in there and then close it back out. Awesome. One of the yeah. boys. So obviously, mom and dad don't care if there's always this intrusion going on or yeah, somebody's they're around. Pretty, they're pretty docile for that. Heard the um, tolerance of it. Yeah, tree swallows don't like it at all. They don't like it. Uh, yeah. But, but bluebirds really don't care. They just okay. sit off to the side and watch you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So one of the things, and I don't know if I'm going to try it. I I, I'm, I bought this. Um, it's got an app on my phone now. I got this thing. You hook it up, and it's got. It looks like this here, and it's got a little camera on the end, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. for scoping out on the sink, you know, drain, whatever it is. Yeah. So I thought, well, geez, I can just go up to each house, and I can stick in a hole, and I can see what's in there without right. without opening yeah. it, especially when they get to the point where they're going to get big enough that you don't want them jumping out on you, because once that happens, okay, they're gone, you know, and I, I try to run around and catch them, and there you're not going to. Yeah. Does know. it have a light? Because it must be dark in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very cool. I've tested it out already, looking at pipes and stuff like that. So it, it works. It yes. Works. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So what, it's, when you check, what exactly are you checking for? What kind of things should you see? Are you just looking for problems? Well, yeah, you look for problems, or um, <coughs> like I, I have a clipboard with with my tally sheet on it for each each house and each you know place, and um, so I look at okay for first of all how many eggs are hatched. Okay, so I got five in this box, and then I'll come back and I look at it. Okay, there's four of them are hatched, you know, and there's one egg left. Is it a dud egg, or is he, you know, waiting for his turn, you know, you know? And then if they all fledge, when they, you know, get bigger, you watch them, and when they all fledge, 
Now I count that there was five eggs laid and four chicks had, you know, fledged. So that gives me my count of how many went out of the nest. And if there was an egg left in there, that was a dud egg. And then I've always been going to keep one so I could just put it in my, you know, I may do that this year and just <coughs> put it in my, but I don't want to break it. And sometime it have rotten egg smell, so I don't know if I hard boil it or what. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just, just keeping tabs on how many, and then at the end of the year, I can go through my tally sheet and I can say, oh yeah, five babies, four babies, six babies, you know, and then 25 on that house, and then go back to, you know, type of thing. And then I send in, we send in the information, and Lowell's a big proponent too, and he, once he, he liked me better once he found out I was a member of RAW, because he's, he's on the board of directors for um, educational for purpose for, for kids. So we send that information into them, and then they tally it all up, and then we'll get the report back. Like last year, I think we fledged 15,000 bluebirds in the state of Wisconsin. And for I can't remember how many how many years running, Wisconsin was the number one bluebird producer over Minnesota, Iowa, you know those type of things.